Welcome back to our Total Sense Bite Size episodes. I'm Tom Henske, and I'm here to help parents teach their kids about money. Today, I'll be preparing you for your next money dinner time conversation with your kids. In this short episode, I'll give you a few questions to help prompt the conversation. Nothing more, just some helpful questions to ask, and I'll also give you some of the responses you're likely to hear. This should be enough to help pique their curiosity about money. You are simply stopping the trend of money being a taboo topic in the household. You're not trying to claim that you're money smart yourself. You're not trying to make them a financial guru. You're just getting the conversation going to open their minds. Let's jump right in. Today's topic is getting money in their hands. One of the must do's on teaching financial literacy is getting money in your kids' hands to help them practice. Why? It helps give them context and helps give them some real life experience as to how it works. Let's think about it like this. Imagine that I am endeavoring to teach my kids about soccer. We wake up in the morning, we get in the car, we drive over to the high school, get out of the car, walk over to the soccer field, and we stretch out. And then I say, okay, now run around and pretend like you're playing soccer. And they stop. And they look at me like I have seven heads, but politely ask, don't we need a soccer ball to learn how to play soccer? Now that I have you laughing, you're probably saying to yourself, duh, how could you teach them about soccer without having a soccer ball? Well, 90% of parents are doing just that. They're trying to teach their kids about money without getting money in their hands. No soccer ball. And we wonder why kids are going to college, lacking budgeting skills, getting into credit card debt. This happens because we never give them actual money to practice with. Let me walk you through what we're trying to accomplish at this monthly dinner, the why and the how. First, start off by sending the kids that TikTok that we provided. That will get the conversation in their heads and get them thinking about it. Remember, social media can be your friend if you use it wisely. I think step one is just to ease the mood. Basically, give your version of the soccer ball analogy. This is where you just want to get the conversation flowing and make it easy to talk about. So I use soccer. I have a friend of mine. She was a tennis player, so she used not bringing a racket to help the kids practice. I have another buddy who his kids are musically inclined, and he gave the story of teaching them to play the piano without having a piano. You get the idea. What you just want to steer clear of is anything like dancing or jogging or something that doesn't involve a ball or an instrument or something of that nature. The next step, step two, is we're going to go really big picture. What we're just trying to help them understand is how adults in the real world are getting money. For 99% of the population, this is going to work uh, and helping them understand that money just doesn't grow on trees. So the first question you could start with is this. What are the ways that adults get money to spend on the things that they need and want? Start with that and let them think through your household before they expand it to maybe some of their friends. And don't get caught up with just making it occupations. Let them be fun. For example, you'll hear a couple of occupations, but then you'll hear fun answers like win the lottery or an inheritance or my favorite of all time, which was robbing a bank. Uh, it's, let them be silly. Let it be fun before you hop into the next question, which is what are the actual jobs that people have? And this becomes an important area to really delve into. Answers you'll get here are musician, finance, biologist, actress, librarian, construction, waiter, business owner. All of those are great. Before I give you this next question, I realize that this one sometimes raises some eyebrows of the people that I'm working with. And it's this, how does each of those jobs differ in income and what does that mean to their long-term lifestyles? The responses you're likely to hear after you ask that question are going to be things like maybe income disparities or control over their schedule. One profession might have a lot of control, whereas other professions might not have any. You might have more money at retirement, less money at retirement. You'll also hear things like benefits, believe it or not, or retiring early. Back when I was a financial advisor, I know that kids of the families that I worked with got used to a certain lifestyle, whatever that lifestyle might be. And it's important that when they get older, if they want to live that same lifestyle, that they understand and match it to whatever career that they choose. The examples that people always love to use are 
teachers versus Wall Street executives. Not one is better than the other, but they're really different. So a teacher might earn a little bit less, but might have a much better quality of life. And if they work in a public school system, maybe there's even a pension to take care of their retirement. I think that's important to talk about with kids just so they go in eyes wide open when it comes to choosing what they want to do for a living. Let's move on to step three. This is where we're getting to the big point, but you're going to take a baby step here because eventually what you're going to do is ask them, how are they going to make money? But before you do that, take that step back and ask your kids this. If you had a friend that said to you, I wish I had more money to spend and you were coaching them, what are the ways that you would recommend that they get more money? You see, you're helping them get the right answers in the context of advising a friend. So the answers you're apt to get from them with this would be ask your mom or dad, otherwise known as bank of mom and dad, or try to do some chores and earn an allowance, or get a handout from grandma or grandpa. Then you'll get down to maybe get an hourly wage job in town. You know, there are going to be some age restrictions for that, so it depends on how old your kids are. But define how that works, meaning you go to work, you have a shift, you then at the end of the week get paid. And you can use examples as a, being a waiter or maybe working in an ice cream store. But then you get into some really interesting entrepreneurial ventures, things like as easy as babysitting or washing cars. You know, just let their mind go as to how they would advise their friends to make money. Okay, we're finally there, step four. This is where you make it real in your own household. I would highly recommend that you talk about spending in the context of their wants, not their needs. That's to say, as the parent, you're gonna pay for the house, the mortgage, you're gonna pay for the heating, you're gonna pay for putting food on the table, basic clothes, things like that. Focus on what they want, not the needs, just all the little extras. So for example, if your kid likes to go to the movie or to the coffee house with their friends, or if you have an older child that has a car that's going to need gas, make that their responsibility. These are all things that are not necessarily needs, they're more wants. And then follow through with this question. Now that we've talked about advice that you would give a friend, how do you think it's best for you to start earning a little money? At the end of the day, it's vitally important to get money in your kids' hands so that they can practice. How you do it is a very personal choice. It's just so important that it gets done. I hope you enjoyed our episode of Total Sense. A special thank you goes out to Verso Studios at the Westport Library. Tune in for our next Money Chat. <laughs>